Hi folks, hope you are okay. I just wanted to <clears throat> make a video <laughs> um, <clears throat> concerning uh, communism in, in the in 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 the West at the moment. Um, and the reason I wanted to make this video is because a unless you know what your enemy enemy is, unless you know what your enemy is, how can you fight that enemy? How can you deal with that enemy? Uh, and b to encourage people to 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 be able to stand in a time where the west is is becoming very very antagonistic to christianity um now uh, there's so much to talk about in this video uh i don't know i don't even know where to begin but uh, i want to just give a a kind of classical understanding of communism uh, and just to uh, some thoughts about communism. Communism is a social and political ideological that strives to create a classless society in which all property and wealth are commonly owned and in, instead of by individuals. The ideology of communism was developed by Karl Marx and Frederick Engels in 1848. A true communist society is the opposite of a capitalist society, which relies on democracy, innovation, and the production of goods for profit. The Soviet Union and China were prominent examples of communism. So uh, I want to play uh, this definition of, because uh, communism is, is linked to uh, Marxist thinking. So I just want to play this on apology. of God's providence, which means that there are particular stations in life. Some people are wealthy and some are not. And you know what? The biblical view is we have to accept that. Now, we can work hard to make more money. There's nothing wrong with that. But, I mean, equality, this kind of Marxist equality is not a biblical notion. Now, we're all equally made in God's image. We're equally sinners before God. And salvation is equally available within God's elective purposes, of course, to anybody who believes. But that's not the equality, of course, that Marxism is talking about. It's essentially talking about economic equality, which is not really biblical at all. It's equality right. of results rather than equality of condition, which is the biblical view. Well, so that in a nutshell is the classical Marxism. Classical, so yes. cultural Marxism is broader. It basically holds, the cultural Marxists hold that everything should be equalized. Sex should be equalized, not just economic, sex should be equalized. Yep. And um, Condition in society should be equalized, and age should be equalized. Morality should be equalized. There shouldn't be one morality greater than another. Cultural Marxism is the war on all hierarchies, particularly white males. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Uh, but, but, but essentially, cultural Marxism is an attack on privilege, just as the original economic Marxism was an attack on economic privilege. This is an attack on essentially all cultural privilege. And you know what God privileges? God privileges his word. Um, so before we get into it, I want to just share with you some articles um, before we get into the discussion. Uh, this is an excellent article um, on Table Talk. Um, 
modern fascism revisited by jean edward uh, vive very very good uh, article there uh, please read that you'll be really blessed by it it's really uh, quite uh, an eye-opener so before we get into the conversation uh, so that's the article there <clears throat> please read that article it's very enlightening about our current situation um, also um, uh, a brief history of uh, Antifa is very very interesting and very helpful uh, so uh, this is the article so please read this article it's very very interesting just to give you uh, a shout out uh, just to get a, a basis of what we're talking about you know so that's the article there it's good to be informed you see so this is a very very uh, informative article uh, on uh, antifa uh, so we'll get uh, some more information yeah uh, the history of communism uh, is in this article uh, so this is a helpful article on communism um, here so I'll give you the link I, I want to give you these resources so that uh, as we go into the conversation uh, you get a basis of what I'm talking about, why I'm talking about this topic. I, I feel I need to talk about this topic um, to encourage people, because I think maybe what I'm going to be talking about has been on your mind as well, you know? Uh, so I'm going to go uh, share some things here. Uh, Thanks, Grasshopper, yeah. Uh, read the life of Alexander Solzhenism. I think his life, uh, what happened to him, is very relevant to what's happening today in the West. <clears throat> so please, um, if you get a chance, please read and study the life of Alexander Solzhenism because I think what happened to him is happening to people now in the West and is going to continue to happen to more and more people. Okay. Uh, and I feel I need to talk about this topic uh, because uh, I think it's on people's minds and uh, things need to be said. Um, and you go on monogism and you can look at Marxism uh, there, okay? Okay, so we're, we're, we're done with the information there. Okay. So, as you know, uh, communism is the idea of uh, basically making a classless society. Uh, and the idea is that you make a classless society so that you know nobody has more wealth than others now when i use the word communism has taken over the west i i'm i'm meaning more of a kind of new communism a kind of neo-marxist communism 
where it's not just about taking the wealth of people and distributing it to everybody, but it's, it's also about identity, stripping anybody, any one group of power, okay? So we see that in neo-Marxism ideology. So bear with me. So when I say communism, I'm talking today about a new kind of communism that's come to the West, which is more interested, not, not just in the economic side of redistributing wealth, but more interested as well in identity politics where there is the stripping of power of any privileged group. So we see in this uh, Western society, we see the rise of BLM, Black Lives Matter, the rise of Antifa, the rise of the gay rights, the rise of um, the transgenderism. And they're under the banner of this kind of new communism, which seeks to destroy any strong power base in society. So if, if Christianity is, is the predominant worldview in the West, it has to be destroyed to allow these minority groups to rise. Um, so that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about communism. And in, and in the midst of that, the, there, are certain, um, there are certain things that are central to this agenda. One is uh, violence uh, and aggression towards anybody who disagrees with them. So it's not about rational argument. In this new communism that we see, it's more about power. So you don't see the person who disagrees with you as a person who disagrees with you. You see the person as an enemy. So therefore, they are to be cancelled. They are to be deplatformed. We see this in uh, the universities today, in America and in the West uh, and in the UK, where... Antifa and uh, BLM and LBTQ and transgender rights activists have deplatformed university lecturers or lecturers who come to the university. They've had them deplatformed. And it's not about uh, free speech because these groups see free speech as violence. So if you allow someone who is different from you to speak, then it's seen as those who are exercising free speech, they are exercising violence, and so therefore they must be stopped. And so you find the BLM, the Antifa, uh, you find the LBTQ, the transgender, they will initiate deplatforming, cancel culture, they will have people character assassinated, etc. They will have people's uh, stop from lecturing or even giving a talk on a university campus or in the media. So this is what I'm on about when I say communism, the West has become communist. And so in, the, in, in, in this, the, this default position of um, all identities have to be equal. So therefore, uh, you can't have a Christian identity running like dominating the country. So therefore, it has to be destroyed. Uh, you can't have um, indigenous people in control of a country because they have to be destroyed. So in the midst of all this, Christianity is under massive assault in the West. Um so I'm going to just give you a picture of how this new communism is working. For example, in, in uh, Canada at the moment, uh, there is a pastor who's, who's being prosecuted. And the only reason why he was prosecuted is because he, when it was the truckers who were, who were um, the Canadian truckers were, were putting on a, 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 uh, a protest, it, and 
They lined all the trucks in, in the city centers and they wouldn't move and the government didn't like it. And a pastor spoke on behalf of the truckers and he was arrested and he has been constantly persecuted by the state and put in prison, has been put in prison. And even now, he's, he's, even though he's out of prison, they're trying to put him back in again. The truckers who stood against the government in Canada, they had their bank accounts frozen. And not only they had their bank accounts frozen, but the, the people who sent them money on go, gifts and go, they had their bank accounts frozen. If, if, if that doesn't shock you, if that doesn't, we, we have to start waking up as Christians and start praying more and start working towards evangelism, these countries. We should be shocked. We should be shocked that those truckers had their bank accounts frozen and also the, the, the people who supported them financially and pastors who spoke out for them were arrested and even now being persecuted by the state. And in Canada, there have been laws brought out where if you, mistran if you misgender someone, you don't pronounce their pronouns, you can be arrested. So this is a kind of new kind of neo-Marxist, neo-communism that's come to Canada. So Canada is no longer a free democracy. So you could be on a street and the, the, the guy who you're talking to is transitioning to, is a transgender and says, the guy says she's a woman. And you call that person he when he wants to be called she and you could be arrested in Canada. Okay? That's that's a fact. They even have re-education programs in Canada, such as uh, a prominent psychologist, Jordan Peterson. Okay? <clears throat> if he does not go to the re-education classes, he will have his license revoked as a psychologist. This is neo-communism to boot. In communist society, they had education classes that if you didn't agree with communism, you would go to the education classes until you were brainwashed. They are even still doing it in China today. In China today, they have concentration camps where you go for re-education. In North Korea, they have education camps that if you disagree with the government, you will go to those education camps. That is what you see now in Canada. Canada has fallen to communism. A neo-communism. And we're going to get into this a bit more. We, we, we have to realize our back is against the wall. And we have to begin to pray more. We have to be concerned more. We have to defend more. We have to stand up more because we as Christians are not making a stand as we should. We are like people with our heads in the sand. Jordan Peterson is not a Christian, yet he is making a bigger stand than Christian pastors. Jordan Peterson is not born again, Bible-loving, Bible-loving, evangelical, reformed, defender of the faith. He's a psychologist. And yet he is making more of a stand for, for freedom for everyone else than reformed or evangelical pastors. And we are too much our head in our sand. The head in the sand and not speaking out, not saying anything. So that's Canada. Australia during COVID-19 had the most draconian lockdowns that you couldn't even go outside and <laughs> pull your uh, put your bin rubbish in the bin that's how draconian they were during the lockdown they too are going the same way as canada come to uh britain 
You can't even pray outside an abortion clinic now un unless you are you you'll be arrested. If you pray outside an abortion clinic, you can be arrested. Already two people, a woman and an ex-soldier recently just been arrested. If that's not communism, I don't know what is. The indoctrination of our children in the UK, and it's also in Germany, it's also in France, it's also in Spain, where they have brought these books which are teaching sexual immorality, brainwashing the kids, not at, not at 18, 19, we're talking three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, being taught that they can uh, change their sexual identity. That is communism because communism wants to, in, wants to infect every aspect of society and wants to do it to the very youngest children and to get out. And we as Christians are not doing anything. We as Christians have our head in our sand. There are people going out and standing up, people going outside, the, the, uh, the drag queens that are in the UK, in the libraries, there are people going out there speaking out. Where's the church? Where are the Christians speaking out? It's often Muslims and, and, and just working class people who've had enough. It's very rare you see Christians there. It's very rare you see pastors there complaining about the drag queens that are speaking to kids with a cock -a doodle doos hanging out. Where's the church? Where are the Christians? Where are the pastors? You call yourself reformed, reformed pastor. You should be called pastor, not reformed pastor, meaning pastor as in spaghetti bolognese, because you ain't strong, you ain't standing for the faith, you're flip flopping. So the indoctrination of our children has, has, has come in like a flood. If uh, Nigel Farage had his bank account cancelled, there was a, a pastor, uh, a Church of England vicar, who spoke out against, in UK, he spoke out against uh, the transgender. He had his bank account cancelled. If that is not communism, I don't know what is. People's bank accounts being frozen. I thought we were a democracy. We are not a democracy anymore in the UK. We are a communist state that is indoctrinating children at three, four, five years of age about transgenderism that's allowing men to go into libraries with a cock -a doo doos hanging out, teaching little kids. That's communism indoctrinating people, indoctrinating their kids. Do the parents have a say? Do the parents have a say? No, communism does that. Don't matter what you parents think, we will indoctrinate your kids. And so in the UK, our kids are being indoctrinated that they can change gender and they don't have to tell their parents. They don't have to tell their parents. And they've come in the fifth column in the Church of England, where the Church of England, over 50% of the, of the vicars have said they're all for the woke ideology. That's communism. They seek to come in in a fifth column in a Trojan horse into the church. In China today, there is, a, there is a, the Chinese communist church and then the underground church. There is a communist church, and you can only abide by the official communist church. The underground church you're not to be part of. That's what we're seeing today. The Church of England is becoming the state church of woke ideology. And they'll say to us in the future, unless you abide by this, you cannot meet as, as churches. So you have over 50% of the Church of England ministers are all in for the gay pride. They're all in for, all in for it. That's UK. That is the UK that, that we are in today.
That is not a free democratic society. That is a society controlled by neo-communism and neo-Marxism. And as Christians, we have our head in the sand. We have our head in the sand. We are always on the back foot. We are always on the back foot reacting. We are not proactive. Look at the Muslims. They're never on the back foot. If anybody, if anything's done to them, en masse, they move. En masse, they, they, they stand together and they push back. And the government has to listen to them. Because you can't mess with the Muslims. You don't mess with the Muslims. We as Christians, we're sick. We're like a sick, we're like a bunch of sick people. We, 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 we won't make a stand together. We won't fight together. We won't say anything together. Yet the Muslims, you mess with the Muslims and they will be outside parliament. They will be outside the MPs. They'll be outside the schools. You mess with them and they will say, hey, we've had enough. It's been the Muslims that have stood may the main people that have stood against the the um, against the drag queens in the UK, it's been the Muslims mainly. There's been others, but a lot of them has been the Muslims because the Christians have become worldly. They become uh, sick with the world, sick with they want comfortable lifestyle, and they don't want to rock the boat. But it's time to speak out. It's time to say enough is enough. Vicars that do speak out lose the uh, are suspended from the ministry. There was a lecturer in one of the most uh, over the years was a was known as an evangelical seminary college for the Methodist Cliff College. A lecturer was suspended only recently because he he he, he was saying the Christian. But belief about the on, on, on the issue of gayness and saying, you know, it's a sin, it's wrong. He was suspended in an evangelical seminary in, in the Methodist that was known for generations as a great, powerful uh, seminary for evangelism. And so the walls of, of, of communism have collapsed have come upon the UK and have collapsed our freedoms. Our freedoms have gone. You can have your bank account taken away. You can be suspended from your church. You can be suspended from a seminary. You can be suspended from your work. Even the banks and the businesses and uh, wherever you go, they have cups, gay right cups everywhere you go, gay right flags in the banks everywhere. It's pushed in your face everywhere. Everywhere, and nobody is saying anything about it. The great reformed pastors in UK are not saying anything about it. Those who are supposedly defenders of the faith, they're not putting their neck on the line and speaking out against it. When good men keep silent, then evil reigns. And so we don't want to speak out because we'll have our bank account frozen. Because we'll, we'll, you'll have your kids taken off you as well, probably. If your kid comes home and says, and, and you say, uh, where, where have you been today? And you say, oh, and the kid keeps it silent. And then you say, no, I want to know where you've been. And the little kid says, uh, I've been on uh, transitioning classes. I'm going to get surgery and I'm going to have, I'm going to change from being a boy to a girl. And you say, no, 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 you know you're not. That parent can be arrested and that child can be taken off you now in the UK because you as a parent don't have rights. How did we get to that? How did we get to that? Because people kept silent. People didn't say anything. And we've been keeping silent and silent and silent and silent. Year after year after year after year, we keep silent, we keep silent. You can't do evangelism on university campus without being persecuted by the university authorities now because they will check your 
your diversity uh, sheet and they will see that, oh, wait a minute, you're evangelical, you do mission on our campus as a student union. Wait a minute, where's your inclusion of, of gay people here? Oh, we, we don't agree with that, it's the same. You're not doing evangelism on our, on our campus. That's happening regularly in the UK. That's in the UK. Now to America. Uh, Donald Trump, mugshot. All his lawyers, mugshots. If you don't see that we're a communist, uh, America's fallen to communism, then you're blind. Look at how Donald Trump has been persecuted. Whether we agree with him or not, he sh it, that should not be allowed. Absolute disgraceful. If they've gone for him, they will go for those in America who disagree with the government, they'll go for, for them too. That's just an example. But anybody who disagrees with the nar main narrative in America is either cancelled, maligned, persecuted, you have Antitha who come and be violent at your door. It's become, America has become communist too. So that's the state of the play, okay? That is the state of play that we're in. And every day, it's like I see a cloud, a dark cloud come in. And it's enveloping us, enveloping us. And I just wish, when will some pastors make a stand? And there are one or two that have made a stand. And it's cost them dearly. Like the, the pastor in, in Canada, I mean, the persecuting him. I don't know his name. can't remember his name. Um, but they're persecuting him. But the dark cloud is coming and coming and coming and coming. And I just wonder, where are the people of God? Why aren't people saying anything? And so let's not beat about the bush. The West has fallen. It's no longer a democracy. The powers that be, those above the politicians, BlackRock and all these companies, they have a new world order agenda. You know, the statement is, uh, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. That's a kind of neo-communist kind of idea. The, 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 the capitalism that used to be free market, they want to change it into a kind of climate-controlled uh, market. In other words, it, it's kind of a neo-communist market where the elites will say, uh, what car you can buy, uh, whether you can have a house or not, whether you can have a farm or not. They, they, they'll tell you how much water you can use, how much electricity you can use. That's where they're headed. It's kind of a neoclimate communism. That's where we're headed. The censorship on the internet is part of their agenda. You know... Uh, Yeah, they'll tell you what you can eat, etc. Yeah, they're telling us that already. So that's what we're up against. Now, behind that, yeah, we know it's satanic. We know there is a demonic activity around that. Okay. But what do we do? First of all, we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray a lot more. I've been doing that a lot over the last few months i take a day out and i'm and i'm just praying for globally i'm praying for russia i'm praying for ukraine i'm praying you know i'm praying for donald trump i'm praying lord protect the guy they're going to assassinate him if it continues i'm praying lord protect him I'm, i i take days out sometimes over the last few months and i'm praying for america i'm praying for the uk i'm praying because i can see the darkness is come and coming and coming thick, and we have to pray more. 
We have to pray more. We have to intercede globally. God will hear our prayers. He will hear our prayers. We have to get into the closet and pray more. We have to meet together and pray more. Pray about these things. So the first thing is prayer. We have to pray. Okay? We have to pray. I have been taking days out sometimes over the last few months and all I've done is just pray globally for the church, globally for what's happening because the world has gone crazy and we need to be praying more. You know? We need to pray for revival. We need a global revival. We need to pray more. That's the first thing. So you need to wake up. It's not enough to moan about the situation. You've got to be praying about it. You've got to be praying. It says here in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 and 8, When you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received the reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for... The many words do not be like them, for your father knows what you need for as you ask. Hebrews 4.16, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. 1 Thessalonians 5.16.18, rejoice always and pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Philippians 4, 6 to 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which should pass all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 1 John 5, 14, 15, and this is the confidence that we have towards him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the request that we ask of him. We need to pray more than we've ever done. We need to pray like we've never, ever prayed before. I have prayed, I've never, ever prayed as much as I've been praying over the last few months about the world. So we need to be praying more, need to be meeting together more to pray more for and specific, not, not, not giving it, Jalabalabam, 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 jalabalabam. What's that all about? Jalabalabam, jilibilibum, jilibilibilibili, whatever. Specific prayer, Lord, help America. Specific prayer, Lord, in, bring help to the Canadian churches. Lord, send revival to America. Lord, send revival to UK. Lord, send revival to Germany. Be specific in your prayers. Pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the church. Pray that, that governments will change and righteous governments will come in. Righteous governments will come in. People who love the Lord, people who love the word of God will come into politics. Doesn't Paul and Peter talk about that? And then a 
then we need to evangelize. We need to get the word of God out. We need to get the word of God out. We we have free some freedoms left, okay? We have some freedoms left. Let us do everything we can to use that freedom, that little bit of freedom that we do have, let's use it to get the word of God out. Buy Bibles and give them to the schools. Buy Bibles and give them to the colleges. Buy Bibles and give them outside the universities if they won't let you in. Send Bibles to the politicians. Send Bibles to, to, uh, to the media. Just flood the whole place with the word of God because the word of God can do the work. The Holy Spirit moves on the word and the word can just change a whole society. So get the word of God out. Use your opportunity now. I was listening to George Verwer, his life. You know, George Verwer died uh, recently. And uh, what an amazing man of God he was, George Verwer. And he, uh, he, when he was a young man, he went to, uh, to Mexico uh, in a van with a few other students, and they gave Bibles out, etc. Et and uh, there was hardly any churches at the time. But now there's hundreds of churches in the areas that he went to because he, they went there and they soaked the place with the word of God. You know, soak the United Kingdom with the word. Soak America with the word. Soak Canada with the word. Soak Australia with the word. Soak Germany, France, uh, Holland, uh, Spain with the word. Get the word of God out to people. Give them free literature. Give them free Bibles. Give them free New Testaments and get it out to the people. God will do the rest. God will do the rest. Take your opportunity, you know. You know, when when uh, George Ville got married, they sold their wedding cake to get more money to buy Bibles. Sold his wedding cake to get Bibles. Get the word of God out in America. Sacrifice yourself. Sacrifice your own comfort zone. Sell something. Go buy a batch of Bibles and give them out to your community. Instead of moaning. Get the word of God out. Wasn't it Luther said, I did nothing, it was the word for the Reformation? Get the word of God out in Spain. Get the word of God out in in, in, in France, in Germany, France is on a knife edge. France is collapsing. Get the word of God out. We have a great opportunity to evangelize. Millions of people are pouring in from all over the world in, in illegal immigration in, in the United States, in France, in Germany, UK. All these Ill illegal immigrants, give them Bibles. Who knows what will happen? Maybe a revival will break out among the immigrants and spill out into the UK, spill out into America, spill out into France and Germany. Who knows? Get the word of God out. Instead of having our heads in the sand, moaning about the situation, get moving and doing something for the glory of the Lord. Get the word of God out. Get advertisements in newspapers and get set off a free Bible for the community. Don't just sit there and do nothing. It's, it's not good enough to do nothing. You have to do something. It's great to pray, but then you've got to move and do something. Get the word of God out. Matthew 28, 19, 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all but I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Go.
It's no good going to church. You sing your songs, you sing your praises, and you listen to the sermon. You're in your own little castle, in your own little church, and then you go home, you turn on BBC or ABC in America or, or whatever it is you watch, Fox News, whatever. And you watch the news, and you say, oh, transgenders coming in, oh, the drag queens, oh, and you moan. And then the next Sunday you go to church, you listen to your sermon, yes, pastor, you have your cup of tea, you have your cup of coffee, and you leave the church. That's not good enough. You need to do something. Why don't you buy why don't you buy all the children in your community children's Bibles? Why don't you buy everybody in your workplace a Bible and say, you know, I want to present this to you all. It's a gift. Here, give them all a Bible. Your day center, give them all a Bible. Buy them all a Bible. You can buy Bibles for a couple of dollars, a couple of pounds. They'll do more good than anything else because the Holy Spirit will use that in their life. By, by, if, if every Christian did that in America, if every Christian did that in UK, if every Christian did that in Spain or France or Germany or Austria or Poland or any of these Eastern uh, European countries, if every Christian did that, started giving Bibles away, within 10 years, who knows, things might, have, might completely be revolutionized and changed you got to do the gideon shuffle you know the gideons they give out free bibles you got to do the gideon shuffle and get some bibles out in your community start bible study groups start cell groups invite people to study the word of god in your home invite people to study the word of god at your workplace at your day center start the cell groups if every Christian started to do that, there would be a revolution in the West. Things would change rapidly in the West. Or are you just going to go to church, you listen to the sermon, you do a bit of singing, you give a little offering, and you talk about the church pastor, the pastor or the elders, they're not doing the job, they're not doing this, and you moan. You have your cup of tea or your cup of coffee if you're in America at, at the end of the service. You talk about Mrs. So-and-so's in hospital or uh, Mr. So-and-so's not come to church this week. Wonder why. You're, you're, you're bothered about your own little problems in the church and then you finish and then you go home, you turn the TV on and you go, oh, drag queens in the library in Manchester, drag queens in, in, in New York at the library. Oh, dear. Oh. Isn't it terrible? Isn't the world coming to? Why don't you go and give Bibles out? Get your pension and go and buy some Bibles. Get some of your money that you get and buy some Bibles. And instead of moaning, get out into the community and say, hey, yeah. Give them Bibles. Go down to the drag queen thing when they're reading the drag queen and stand there saying, hey, yeah, cop for this. <laughs> Children's Bibles. Here, kids, have these. <laughs> give them Bibles. When the Muslims turn up and they're moaning about the drag queens, give the Muslims the Bibles. Here, here's some Arabic Bibles. Get the word of God out. All these immigrants that are flooding into America, they're from Venezuela, they're from Argentina, they're from Nigeria, they're from all over the world. Give them Bibles in their language. What a mission field. What a mission field. You've got in America, they're coming in. Give them the word of God. Send everybody in, in Washington, D.C., in the deep state. Send them all Bibles. Send Hillary Clinton a Bible. Send Bill Clinton. Send Obama a Bible. Send the Bibles out. <laughs> and who knows? Even, even Hillary Clinton, Obama, they might get saved and born again. Send the generals Bibles. Send all the generals at, Pen at the Pentagon Bibles. Send them the word of God. Who knows a general might get saved and start speaking up against all this military industrial complex that keeps starting wars everywhere. One general might get saved and say, hey, enough's enough. 
because they're following Jesus. Send the word of God out. Flood the nation with the word. You know, uh, when Hudson Taylor went to China, and this is an important thing to remember, when Hudson Taylor was in China, uh, they had the Boxer Rebellion. It's an amazing story, really that time of history uh, the the empress at that time she was sick and tired of western powers interfering in china i mean what um, uk did and america did and japan did especially the uk uh, they annexed various parts of china and made made them take opium it was wicked what we did british uh, what we did uh, as as Brit the british mercantile mercantile class forced opium on the Chinese people. And the Empress was not happy with it. And she sort of gave the wink, wink, nod, nod to the boxers. And these boxers were a kind of weird cult, Chinese cult, and they rose up. And I'm, I'm telling you, they slaughtered the Christians. They they killed the Christians everywhere. I mean, they they had no mercy. I mean, they killed, they killed, uh, oh, they, they killed baby, Christian babies, Christ, Christian families. They, they had no mercy. But you know something? The, the, the Christians didn't stop. They kept on doing the mission work. And no matter how dark it gets, no matter how much the opposition gets to us in the UK, in America, in Australia, in Canada, in France, Germany, wherever, Holland, no matter how tough it gets, we just keep going, keep doing the work, keep doing the mission. Keep going. They're not running down the streets with machetes like they did in the Boxer Rising. They're not killing your kids with machetes in the streets like they did in the Boxer Rising. Yes, you're, you're, you're dealing with opposition, but nothing like the Christians in the time of the Boxer Rising. So you keep moving. You keep doing the work. You keep on doing the mission. Keep going to the prisons. Give the word of God out. Keep going to the hospitals. Even if they won't let you give Bibles out in the hospital, you can stand outside the hospital and give Bibles. Give the Bibles to the police, to the army. Give the Bibles everywhere you can get a Bible. Give it to them. Keep doing the work. No matter what the opposition is, it's nothing like the boxer rising where there were machetes cutting people down everywhere. And when you do that, Make disciples, it says here. This is powerful. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Let me get this. I want to just show you this. Not only do we give Bibles out, we then make disciples. This is the key. Philip Spencer was a Lutheran uh, theologian, the father of um, German pietism. Okay. Why is, it, why is this important for today? Because what he did, the, the, the churches, the national church of Germany of that time had become dead, become totally, totally dead. Okay. So what he did to undermine the dead orthodoxy, because this orthodoxy was stopping preaching, it was stopping the work of God, this dead orthodoxy in Germany, uh, because it was run by the state and, and, it, and, it, and it was just blocking the flow of God. So what Spencer did, he organized Bible study groups, cell groups in people's houses, and he undermined the national church. 
because all these Bible study groups, they, they sprung up everywhere and new life came to Germany through this man's work, right? And that's what you need to do. Start cell groups, Bible study groups. Start a cell group in your home. Start a cell group in the workplace. Start a cell group and start discipling people. Number one, it will undermine the woke institutions. It will undermine the neo-Marxist institutions because under the radar will be these cell groups, these Bible study groups under their noses. And they will become strong in years to come. And secondly, when persecution comes, the church will be much stronger because you've discipled people. It's so important now in Germany, in France, in Spain, in the UK, in America, in, in the West, that we train a new generation of young people that will be strong in the time of persecution. So we need to get busy now starting discipleship groups and, 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 and discipling people. So when things get worse, we'll have a church that will stand. And that's what you see, saw. In the time of Hudson Taylor, they really discipled the people. They really, really discipled the people. And so when persecution came, the box were rising. There were, there were indigenous Chinese Christians standing strong because Hudson Taylor's people, they trained the people in the word of God well. And those people stood, even people today in China who are standing against communism today can trace their ancestry back to the Christians who trained their father or their grandfather or their grandmother or, or their mother in the time of Hudson Taylor because they took time to train their people well. So you've got to train your people well. You've got to do discipleship. And, and take the opportunity that you have right now to disciple as many people as you can and train them in the word of God. Discipleship groups must spring up everywhere in America, everywhere in France, everywhere in Germany, everywhere in the UK, everywhere in Holland. Discipleship groups where people are studying the word of God together. That will help the church to be stronger in the coming days of persecution in the West. Things are going to get worse and worse and worse in the West. Till things get better, disciple people where you can. So those are three things that we can do at the moment. And I think the fourth thing that we can do is stand together. If a pastor is arrested because he's misgendered someone, if a street preacher is arrested because he's misgendered someone. If, if a school teacher or a nurse loses her job because maybe uh, they've prayed in class or something, you need to go and stand with them. You need to, if they're in court, you need to stand outside the court. You need to start standing with fellow Christians. That's the way the enemy can conquer by dividing us. By setting each other against each other. So if a teacher gets arrested because maybe she's misgendered someone. Maybe there's a person in the class, a boy, who says he's a girl. And the teacher says, are you okay, uh, John, when he wants to be called Julie? And she gets arrested for doing that. It's no good having your head in the sand and saying, oh, and it's sad about that teacher. She was arrested because she said... He was called John when he wanted to be called Julie. Oh, and it's sad. No, you got to stand with that teacher. You got to write to the school and say, What you're doing is wrong. You got to write to the judge and say, What you're doing is wrong. You got to write to your MP and say, Hey, I'm not going to vote for you if you don't do anything. We got to stand together. The Muslims stand together. You attack a Muslim and you've attacked a pack of wolves because they'll all stand together. You attack a Muslim, either politically, economically, uh, through the law, verbally, whatever, 
you are not fighting that one Muslim. The whole Muslim community will come and stand with that Muslim. Guaranteed. They protect each other. We as Christians, a teacher gets arrested because they're mistransgendered. A vicar gets his bank account cancelled because is 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 mistransgendered. Uh, a nurse gets uh, cancelled by the culture because uh, she someone asked her to pray uh, and she prayed and and the authorities found out about it and she loses her job. We as Christians keep our head in the sand and we don't do anything. We don't say anything and we definitely don't stand with that person who's being persecuted. And you wonder why things are getting worse because we will not stand up. The Muslims will make a stand for each other Muslim. We are the people of God. And if a fellow member of the kingdom is taken out, either their bank, is can bank account is cancelled, either they've been arrested for transgendering or praying in, in the school or praying in the, 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 the hospital or whatever it is, you should stand with that person. No matter what. And if we all stood together, it would be difficult for the authorities to persecute. But what what happens is when, when they do deplatforming, when they cancel people, the whole psychology of canceling people is to send a message to those who may think that same as that person is to make you fear. They want to make you fearful so that you won't speak out, so that you won't say anything. That's the whole point of cancelling people. So you've got to say, no, I'm not going to be fearful. I will stand with you. And if the authorities come after me, so be it. And so we, th this all communist kind of bringing division amongst us is working. It's making us weak because we will not stand up with each other. If every person, not just Christian, but if every person who believed in freedom of speech stood with the truckers in Canada, they would not have had their bank accounts closed. They would, all those who supported them financially would not have had their bank accounts closed because the C Canadian government would have been very, very f fearful of the backlash that was coming their way. So, we have to stand with each other. If an American Christian is arrested, we have to stand with that American Christian. If a Canadian Christian is arrested, we have to stand with that Canadian Christian. If an Australian Christian is arrested, we have to stand with that Canadian Christian. If a Dutch Christian is arrested, we have to stand with that Dutch Christian. We, we are a global community. Anybody who's part of the kingdom of God and is persecuted, we have to stand with them. That goes for the people in Pakistan. That goes for the Christians in Pakistan, the Christians in Nigeria, the Christians um, in, in the Middle East, etc. Yeah. So those are my four things. Prayer. Flood the nations with the word of God. Disciple people. And stand together. Those are four positive words. But let's let's not be under any any illusion. The West is no longer a demo. The, uh, Australia is no longer democratic. New Zealand is no longer democratic. UK is no longer democratic. France is no longer a democracy. Holland is no longer a democracy. Spain is no longer a democracy. America is no longer democracy. Canada is not. They're not democracies anymore. Let's be under no illusion. We are in a different time zone in history now. And now that they're not democracies, we can expect the kind of persecution that people are getting in Pakistan, that people are getting in, in the Middle East. We can expect that kind of persecution in the West. I am in Ghana right now, okay? I can generally street preach 
and generally I'm not hassled, yeah? Unless I go to the festivals. If I go to the festivals, I'm a dead man. <laughs> That's like a red rag to the bull. If they have these festivals for the idol worship, if I go to one of those festivals, festivals, I'm dead. I won't come back alive. So I, I don't go to those festivals or else I won't be coming back alive, okay? But generally speaking, I can go to the villages and generally preach. If I go and speak to the king, the local king or the local chief, so can I preach here? They're okay. It's fine. I can preach. The police, generally, they just leave you alone, okay? When I'm coming to the UK, because my mum passed away, my dad needs me. I need to be with my dad because he's not finding it easy at the moment. So I need to be with my dad. And we're having a special uh, celebration of my mum's life. I, I arrive on my mum's birthday, which is amazing. And then on the 23rd, as a family, we're having a special get together to commemorate my mum's life. That's what my mum wanted. So the family have had to wait for me to come. When I've done that, I'll be doing some preaching in the UK and, I'm, and I am concerned about the preaching that I'll be doing in the UK because I believe that five years ago, what UK was is not what UK is now. The, the UK has moved from democracy into some kind of weird neo-Marxist kind of communist state. Our own prime minister is not even elected prime minister. End of debate. He was not elected by anybody. <laughs> so when, 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 that's the situation. So I am fearful when I come to UK that if I'm street preaching and evangelizing, I could be arrested and I probably will get arrested. I won't be looking for trouble. But the preaching that I did 10 years ago in the UK on the streets, they will come for me if I do that kind of preaching in UK in September, in October. So things have changed. And we have to be aware of it and we have to pray. You know, one of the things in, in Daniel... Uh, chapter 12 and in the book of Revelation it mentions mainly two things it mentions courage the need for courage but what people don't realize is if you go to I think it's Daniel 12 you just come to Daniel 12 another thing that we need is this it's very important Just come with me to Daniel. Yeah, Daniel 12. I'll just get it. I'll just get it. <clears throat> just give me a second. One of the things... Yeah, but this is all over Daniel, you know. In Daniel chapter 117, it says, God also blessed Daniel and his friends with knowledge and skill, all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. But at the end of the book of Daniel, when Daniel's talking about the end times, it talks about wisdom. And you also get that uh, in in, in uh the book of Revelation, the, the, the importance of wisdom. It's, it's important to be courageous, but also 
just as important is the importance of wisdom. We need God's wisdom in these end times to navigate and to deal with all these issues that are coming our way. We need the wisdom of God. You know, if they bring in banking where we don't use money and they, they want to know that you, you, you have a, it's a digital economy, we need wisdom how to navigate that, how to deal with that. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. We, we need wisdom. So pray that God will give you the wisdom to navigate the issues and the challenges because the challenges that we're going to be facing, that we are facing and that we're going to face. You see, in, in Ghana, it, it, it's more simpler than it is in the West as a Christian at the moment for, for in Ghana for me. I don't have the complications that a missionary would have in the UK. In, in Ghana, I'm free. I'm free to preach. I'm free to speak to the children. I'm free to give literature. I'm free to give Bibles to the children. You know, I'm free to tell them about a man is a man and a woman is a woman. I don't have these issues. I'm free to tell them that, that you know, what sin is. I can tell them what sin is and and... The teachers will take it, the students will take it, the authorities take it. There's a, lot, there's a lot more freedom in a way in Ghana that I have in Ghana than I would in UK. But I know that Christians in the UK and Christians in the West, it's getting darker and darker. Our free, your freedom, and it's mine because I'm British, I, I have a UK passport. Our freedoms in the UK, our freedoms are going. And so this video is to say, look, as a brother, I see the clouds coming in. Is that what you see? And, and I hope that encourages you that others have seen what you see. That you're not going crazy. That what you're seeing, I'm seeing. It's true. The, the clouds are coming. And then just to encourage you. To be proactive in that, to pray, to give Bibles out, to discipleship people, and to stand with others and to encourage others who are going through difficulties and, and to be with each other and to encourage each other. That's all I can say. But you're not going crazy. You're not going mad. What you see is correct. The world has gone crazy. The world has gone mad. You've not gone mad. You, you're the same as you were yesterday. You're not going crazy. It's the world that's gone crazy. It's the world that's gone mad. The world has gone mad. That time when um, a few years ago I went to UK. I can't remember how long ago it was, but I was I went to UK. And the day I got back is the day they brought in this COVID-19 lockdowns, can't travel and everything. And on that day, perhaps someone can remind us what that day was when they brought in all this stuff. And I went on Ghanaian, I looked at Ghanaian TV and they got all the statistics of the COVID-19 deaths, so-called so COVID-19 deaths. No one, no one, no one during that COVID-19 in Ghana, I didn't see, we didn't see one person die. I didn't see one person die during that COVID-19. Not one person in Ghana. Not one person did I see. And we were in a big community. Not one person. And all the, the schools were told to close down. All the schools at that time. 23rd of March, that's probably it, uh, brother. That's probably it. That day, I got into Ghana back to Ghana that day everything just went crazy from that day the world has just gone topsy-turvy the world just went nuts the world just went completely utterly crazy now we have gay uh, we have transgender flooding in now we have 
drag queens reading stories to kids with the tackle showing. The world just gone crazy, absolutely crazy. Mugshots of former president. It's crazy. It's total crazy. So it's not you that's gone crazy. It's the world that's gone crazy. The world has departed from the word of God. The world, the world has rejected this, rejected the Bible. And it's in free fall. Okay, sister. <laughs> the world's in free fall. The world's in a mess. So it's not you the problem. It's the powers of darkness. And the world that's the problem following the darkness. So don't get discouraged that it's you. No, it's not you. It's the world. So be encouraged. And don't don't surrender to the culture. Don't surrender to the woke mob. Don't surrender to the cancel culture. Don't surrender. Don't cower. Don't cower. I fear when I come to UK, I'll be a John the Baptist. My head will be cut off when I get to UK this time. I've just got a feeling about it. i got a feeling about I'll be arrested. I've never been arrested for preaching. But I've got a feeling I'll be arrested this time. But don't cower. Don't shy away from being a Christian in these days. So let's pray. I hope it's just a little bit of encouragement, really. It's been on my mind for quite some time, last couple of years. I remember some years ago, I think it was about five years ago. Yeah. I do remember, I'll never forget this. I know it sounds strange, sorry. I know this sounds very, very strange. Okay, but I'll share this experience that I had. About six years, five, six, I think about six years ago, before I came to Ghana for the first time, because I was thinking of coming to Ghana, meeting Dorcas, my wife, etc. And, sorry, I got an itchy nose. Sorry. Sorry. I always start itching when I'm... I just get something. So... About six years ago, I was in the car with my dad, and my dad's driving. I can't remember where we were going, but it, it was uh, it was on the motorway. We're on the motorway. It was quite a long drive, and a radio program came on. I think it would, might have been Melvin Bragg or someone, and they were talking about the history of communism in China, Chairman Mao. And for some reason, I felt I had to listen to the program. I thought I was just drawn to this program that was on the radio while my dad was driving. And they were talking about the time of Chairman Mao. And they were talking about how Chairman Mao's communist people, they named and shamed people how they arrested 
dissidents, how they cancelled people, how they um, burned books in the, in the town, and, and etc. And as I was listening to it, I felt like God was educating me on, on what Chairman Mao did. And I'm not kidding. If you today go and study the life of Chairman Mao and everything that he did, and you compare it to the council culture today, it's the exact same methods that Chairman Mao used to control his society is the exact same methods being used today. I give you an example. The the people were encouraged to snitch on other people. That if people were not in line with his cultural revolution, you were to tell on your family, you were to tell on your mother, you were to tell on your father, you were to tell on your teacher that your teacher is not in line with what we're doing. And then that person who was exposed would be named and shamed and cancelled. You know, during COVID-19, we were encouraged to tell on other people, even on our own families, those who were not doing lockdown, those who were not wearing masks, those who wouldn't uh, take the injection. We were told to tell the authorities about those people. Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember that uh, in Ghana and in UK, you had to give your information, your phone number to the authorities? Same thing in Chairman's Miles Day. You had to give the information where you lived, what you were doing, etc. Chairman Miles time, anybody who speaks out was taken out. Any main person during the COVID-19 and even today speaks out, you have your bank account, which, which, is the, which is just as bad as assassinating someone. To have your bank account cancelled, to have your bank account taken away, you might as well commit suicide because how are you going to live without a bank account in a Western society? So everything that Chairman Mao did you can see, you can track today that's being used by our authorities in the West. So... So that, that means, Oops. my wife, hello, are you okay? Oh, good. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can get it me if you want. Uh, no, 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 just the rice will do. I'm on, I'm, on, I'm live online, but they can't hear you, so don't worry. <laughs> Someone said, God bless you, Dorcas. Oh, no, no, don't worry. No one can hear you. She's shy. She's shy. Bye, 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 bye. Just my wife. What do I want to eat? She's going to get me something in town, so. Okay, so 
that's it really so just the top and bottom of it really we really really need to pray and we really need to have our eyes open that things are getting very very dangerous in the west and um it's going to get worse you know uh church buildings they're going to close the church buildings down charity status you're going to lose your charity status you don't agree with the lbtq agenda they'll take your charity status away you gotta you gotta be willing to face up to that that's going to happen they're going to close down your buildings because you don't fulfill the diversity agenda that they have you know if a gay person comes into your church or a transgender person and you don't agree with what they what they're about and they complain to the authorities they'll close your church now this is going to happen so you've got a, a christians have got to wake up and think about this what you're going to do so you need to include in your charity status in your uh, the FIC are already doing this, have already doing this, the Federation of Independent Evangelical Churches. But you need to put in your charity status or you need to put in your clause in, in your church about where you stand on marriage. You can't just, uh, you can't just like um, take it for granted your Christian church and you know if, if some gay person comes into your church and says I want you to marry me and my my boyfriend here and you say no we're Christian you they'll shut your church down so you've got to be smart and put in your church constitution what you believe on marriage why you believe it on marriage etc the same with transgenderism you've got to put it in you believe a man is a man a woman is a woman and that's what the Bible believes and etc because if you don't if you don't put that in your constitution they'll close your church down as homophobic or anti-transgenderism and even then when you've done that it's not going to be enough in the future to protect you because in the end they don't believe in the importance of law they believe in in power and so they just see you as an enemy that they have to destroy and so they will destroy your church. They will destroy you. Take you to court. Strip you of your assets. Strip your church. So you better start meeting in houses already. You better start doing house church already. The other thing as well is you need to make sure in your own life, okay, and in your Christian service and in your church, your multimedia footprint needs to now go secret and silent because if someone accuses your church of being anti-gay or anti um anti uh transgender they will not only track what your church is doing they will start to track the individuals of the church well what's this person oh this person goes to it's which Baptist, it's which Baptist church. He's a lawyer, and he and, and he agrees with this church that's homophobic, and they will target your law practice. Or or this is a doctor, and he goes to this Ipswich Baptist church, and they're homophobic. We need to get him off the register of being a doctor. So you need to be careful and secretive about information that you're putting out into the community about your church. Because when the persecution starts to come, they're going to track individuals and your church media, social media footprint. So you now need to make sure if you're a doctor, if you are a, a lawyer, if you are a teacher, uh, if whatever you are, be careful of your social media footprint because they will use it to track you down to find out what you're doing where you are what you believe and if you don't come into line with their way of thinking they will strike you off as being a teacher strike you off as being a lawyer or as a doctor that is already taking place 
but it's going to happen more and more. So be careful. You now need to be more secretive on the social media. Keep your footprint secret because they will track you down and they will find out where you live. They will find out where you work and they will take you out. They will say, right, you go to that church. We've closed the church down, but we ain't done yet. We're going to also get rid of you. That's the kind of persecution that's coming to the UK, to Germany, France, Spain, and, and America. We already see signs of that taking place. So be careful. Everybody has to be more secretive with the social media because they're going to use that to track you down and to hunt you down. And not only to hunt you down, but to spy on you to find out where you're meeting, what you're doing. So you have to start being smart. If you don't agree with me, look at what's happening in China. In China, they're tracking, they track everything you're doing, every movement. They have cameras on every corner. They're starting to have more cameras in the UK, more cameras in America, facial recognition cameras. So they know which house you're going, where you're going, where you're going, where you're going, where you're going. So you've got to start being more secretive in, in, in the way you communicate to people, in the way uh, you, you're on social media, in, in, in everything, because they will start to track you down. And if you're having a cell group, a house group, that they've closed your church down and now you're having a cell group, they want to know well, where they're meeting, what they're doing. And they will, they will track you down with um, facial recognition cameras. They'll track you down on your internet, drop in on your phone, listen in to you on your phone. They're, they're already doing that. In China, but they're already doing it in Canada, in Australia, in America. They were doing it during COVID-19. That was a, a, a practice run. So you've got to get smart and realize <laughs> they're communist. They're not people who love freedom. They see Christians as revolutionary. And so they want to squash every ounce of Orthodox Christianity out of Western society. They will crush, try to crush us to the point where we can't even use a bank account. We can't even buy food. That is coming. So you need to prepare yourself. Even buy land and do farming if they smash your, take away your credit card. It's true. So you need to um, buy land so that you can farm on it if they take away your bank account so that you've got some food, you know. Put your house in someone else's name just in case they even tried to take the house off you. You know? These are the things that are coming. So you've got to be careful and think f five steps ahead of the, what they're going to do. If 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 they can... If, if say, say, for example, let's just think about this, right? The truckers were were protesting against COVID-19 in Canada and there were people sending money go send to go send me money to help the truckers. Those people who sent money to go send me give send go, sorry, give send go, those people who send money to give send go, it was not only the truckers that had their money, their bank accounts seized, it was also the people who sent money to aid them. They had their bank accounts seized. So let's say a teacher, right, is arrested in the UK because she mistransgendered someone and you stand up for that teacher and you send some money to her to help her. And the government, the British government might seize your bank account. You got to think. So you need bank accounts that are secret with money stashed so that 
If you send money by one way and they seize that bank account, you've got another bank account that can function. You've got to think like that. You've got, you've got to think this is where things are moving. For those who are orthodox, those who are evangelical orthodox, that's the kind of world we're living in, and it's going to get ten times worse. So you've got to start thinking on this level. I know it sounds crazy, but... I know it sounds crazy, but there we are. If you, if like the Evangelical Times, for example, if they come after the Evangelical Times, and they, you know, Evangelical Times newspaper, and they seize Evangelical Times bank account, they're done. So the Evangelical Times needs a bank account where they can't seize. Maybe a bank account in Venezuela. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? If they seize the Evangelical Times bank account, say Barclays in UK, maybe the Evangelical Times needs a bank account in Venezuela so they can transfer funds so they can keep the bank keep the, the, the news Christian newspaper going. You gotta think your accounts are gonna be seized, your assets are gonna be seized. So maybe some of your assets need to be in other foreign countries so they can't touch them etc you know maybe you need to have land where you can farm as a family and eat if they take away your bank accounts you know if they can do it to Nigel Farage and take away his bank account Nigel Farage, who's a public figure, if they can do it to him with, with all the backing that he has, he has millions of people that support him, and they can take away his bank account, do you think the authorities are going to be worried about taking away your bank account if, for example, maybe, you know, maybe there's a soldier, ex-soldier, who prayed outside an abortion clinic, yeah? Maybe he has a, uh, a, uh, a charity fund to support him. Uh, he opens a gifts and go. Maybe you send him £20 to help him with his court fees, right? The government tracks it that, oh, there's like hundreds of thousands of people are sending money to this guy. We need to teach these people a lesson. We're going to seize all their bank accounts. Do you think that they're going to be worried about that? About it? Was the Canadian government upset when they when they froze thousands of bank accounts concerning the trucker trucker protest? Do you think they were upset about it? These people have destroyed not only ordinary people, they, they've destroyed billionaires. There are billionaires that have not been in line with these people, these kind of neo-communists. And they've destroyed the billionaires. So if they can destroy a billionaires, they're certainly not going to think twice about you. So you have to think outside the box. If they do come after you, how are you going to survive? Because they will come after you. They will come after your church. The Charity Commission knows all the churches. And there's going to come a time where the government's going to say, look, these evangelical churches, Baptist, Methodist, Reformed, whatever, they're homophobic. We don't want them on our charity status. So they'll start to litigate you and take your assets and take everything off you. Every one of the churches that doesn't come in line. And they'll have the Church of England woke bishops behind them saying, you know what? We have the woke bishops we were all into LGBT. That's the church you need to go to. These minority evangelicals, they're homophobic. They're, they're cockroaches in our society. And they'll strip you of all your assets. 
They'll strip you of all your finance. So what are you going to do? So you have to start thinking now. If this happened, what, what provision, what contingencies do you have if these things happen? And they're going to happen. People like Antifa and people like Stonewall, the gay rights and these transgender people, they're not going to be happy until the church is underground. And they already control the parliament. They already control the House of Laws. They already control Washington, D.C. They already control the parliament in Canada and Holland and France and Germany and, and Australia. They control these parliaments. And there'll come a point where they will come for your church. And then they will not only finish with your church, they will also come for you. What are you going to do about it now? What contingencies do you have now? It's like um, the ch in the Church of England, you know, the Church of England. Uh, so there are Church of England churches in Australia and UK they knew yeah it is it's the satanic thing that binds them all together but some years ago the evangelical churches in the church of england got together and they said look this is coming down the corner where we're going to see gay bishops gay vicars and all the rest of it what are we going to do? So they make contingency. They they change the the uh, the uh, the leases of the church, so that if they had to come out of the Church of England, they would own the buildings. So now there are Church of England churches coming out of the Church of England in Australia and the UK. Some of them made contingency plans years ago that if they got to this point, they would be able to keep the assets. So that was wise planning, that they knew it was going to come down the corner where they'd have to leave the Church of England. So what I'm saying is not crazy. It's already been done by some institutions, you know. All right, I've finished. Let's pray. <laughs> Oof, let's pray. I just, I don't know. I just had to, I just had to, um, it's been on my mind a long time, so. I just had to share. Maybe there's a lot of you out there been thinking the way I've been thinking, but you've not had anybody articulate it. So I, I just, uh, thank you, sister. Thank you. So I just, I just felt I had to articulate it. What was on my mind. Maybe it's been helpful to you that I've articulated it, that maybe you were thinking these things, but, You've been afraid to talk to people about it or you maybe you've talked to it to people in private but you've never had these things said publicly but you know one of one of the things that they're going to do is they'll send us on education classes the other thing that they will do is they'll send us to ment they'll send us to mental mental institutions they'll say oh you're evangelical reformed you believe in the bible you're mentally ill you need to go on a uh, a mental illness program to mental illness hospital or a re-education program. That's another thing they're going to do to re-educate us on being pro-gay or pro-transgender. Pro, uh, and if you don't do that, you won't, be, you won't have access to benefits. You won't have access 
to tax credit. You won't add access to your bank account until you do that. These are some of the things that they're going to bring in. So there we are. Here's a verse for you. Uh, 1 Corinthians. So this is for Christians in the West. It's a wake-up call to get you thinking, praying, mobilizing. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Uh, I'll come to that in a minute. I, I, uh, John. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. So be steadfast, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Keep doing, keep going, keep moving. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, keep moving, keep serving. Uh, Yuri Bezemov, Yuri, let's... There's a man off. Uh, let me just see. Uh, I had John. Yuri Bezimov. Yuri Bezimov. Yuri Bez. Yuri. Yuri. Ah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. I've seen this. This is a fantastic. Uh, Everything that I've been talking about can be tracked in this Yuri Bezimov interview. Thank you for that, John. You want to watch this interview because everything that we... My father was officer of the general staff of the Soviet army. He was inspector of land forces, Soviet troops stationed in countries like Mongolia, Cuba, East European countries. This is the picture taken at the entrance of my Institute of Oriental Languages. It's a part of Moscow State University. As every Soviet student, I was, quote unquote, volunteering for harvesting grain in Kazakhstan. By the end of my training in school, I was recruited by the KGB. This picture was taken on that day, and you can see again how happy it feels to be recruited by the KGB. Pay special attention to number of bottles on the table. One of my functions was to keep foreign guests permanently intoxicated the moment they land at Moscow airport. In 1967, the KGB attached me to this magazine, Look Magazine. A group of 12 people arrived to USSR from the United States to cover the 50th anniversary of October Socialist Revolution in my country. From the first page to the last page, it was a package of lies. So you can watch that. That's a, a brilliant interview. And it, it looks at how, as John was saying, how the communists subvert nations and everything in that interview. I've, I've watched that a couple of times, John. Thank you for that, bro. Uh, but everything that I've been talking about is in that interview. And it, it tells you how they how they subvert nations and all the strategies that that are being used today is in this interview and it's very enlightening very very enlightening so Thank you for that, John. I really appreciate that. Thank you. 
So I'm going to go, go to close in prayer. I hope what I've shared with you might have encouraged you a little bit to be praying and be aware of what's going on. Uh, prepare your institutions, your churches for the attack that's coming away, coming your way from the charity commission by the local government, by national government. These attacks are going to come on all Christian institutions. Um, you know, it's quite funny, really. But uh, I'll just show you this as well. Uh, sorry, I got an itchy. I always itch when I'm... But uh, Paul Washer, Paul Washer. I think is that one? Ah, this is the church in America is going to suffer so terribly. And the church in America. Listen to this. Listen to this. This was said a few years ago. Listen to this. The church in America is going to suffer so terribly. And we laugh now, but they will come after us. They will come after our children. They will close the net around us while we are playing soccer mom and soccer dad. While we are arguing over so many little things and mesmerized by so many trinkets, the net even now is closing around you and your children and your grandchildren, and it does not cause you to fear. You will be isolated from society as has already happened. Anyone who tries to run for office who actually believes the Bible will be considered a lunatic until finally we are silenced. We will be called things that we're not and persecuted, not for being followers of Christ, but for being radical fundamentalists who do not know the true way of Christ, which, of course, is love and tolerance. You'll go down as the greatest bigots and haters of mankind in history. They've already come after your children. And for most of you, they got them. They got them through the public schools and indoctrination and the university and indoctrination. And then you wonder why your children come out not serving the Lord. It's because you fed them right into the devil's mouth. So little by little, the net is closing around. And then it's not little by little. Look how fast things are going downhill just in a matter of weeks. Matter of weeks. But at the same time, know this. Persecution is always meant for evil, but God always means it for good. And is it not better to suffer in this life to have an extra weight of glory in heaven? You must settle this in your mind. This is the one thing I want to say over and over. Do not believe down through history. You have a wrong idea of martyrdom and persecution. You think that these men were persecuted and martyred for their sincere faith in Jesus Christ. That was the real reason, but no one heard that publicly. They were martyred and they were persecuted as enemies of the state, as child molesters, as bigots, as narrow minded, stupid people who had fallen for a ruse and can contribute nothing to society. Your suffering will not be noble. So your mind must be filled with the word of God when all people persecute you and turn on you. And the spirit of God and common grace pulls back and you see even your children and your grandchildren tossing in the lot that you should die. This is no game. You want revival and awakening, but know this. For the most part, great awakenings have come only preceding great national catastrophes or the persecution of the church. I believe God is bringing a great awakening, but I believe that he is raising up young men who are strong in trust in the providence of God to be able to wade through the hell that's going to break loose on us. And it will be on us before we even recognize it. 
unless, unless in God's providence, he is not done. He is not done. And note, this is, this is not silly talk. Apart from a great awakening, these things are going to come upon you. Be ready to lose your homes, your cars, and everything. So, that's what Paul was, she said. That was a few years ago. So, you see what I'm saying? We've got to wake up. What year was that? Uh, what year was that? Let's see. 14 years ago. 14 years ago. I think. Well, not 14 years ago. No. Twenty seventh of October two thousand and eight. So how many years is that? What is it? Two thousand eight. Yeah, two. Well, about thirteen years ago, thirteen fourteen years ago. That was thirteen fourteen years ago. Things have got ten times worse since then. Yeah. Yeah, he, 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 he's not a son of a prophet or he's not in the prophecy, but he was prophesying what was coming. They'll take your house off you, take your car off you. Well, that's what they did. That's what they've done to some people. So there we are, folks. Persecution is coming. Bring it on. No surrender, no surrender, no surrender. We will stand together. Yeah, and uh, Yuri Bezmer of 1980s, he's saying what Paul Washi was saying, but goes into detail about how they do it, how they collapse a nation and take over a nation, these communists. So, so there we are. I've got to go. I've got to go. I need to spend some time in prayer. I feel a lot better today. The last two days, Felt so depressed. Really felt depressed the last couple of days. But today I'm I'm feeling a lot better. I was really struggling the last couple of days. I had to lie in bed for a couple of hours. I just I couldn't shift this cloud of darkness was upon me. Just it was just complete depression. Docker sang to me, she read scripture to me, it still wouldn't clear. I was really, really struggling, and today I'm feeling a lot better. Well, we need to think about how to fight back, eh? Hey, so I was struggling for two days yesterday and the day before was with depression. And uh, it wouldn't shift. And then this morning I woke up. And I feel a lot, lot better. And uh, so I don't know if you've been praying for me, but someone must have been praying for me because it, it cleared. But it's a strange thing, depression. I don't know if it's because I was thinking about my mum. I, I, I don't know if it's because I was thinking about mission work. Um, but I, I, it just wouldn't lift at all. And then this morning, I just woke up. And it, it had gone. Jason O'Brien, God bless you, bro. So yeah, so I feel a lot better. So I'm gonna have a prayer time. And uh, that's it, nothing else to report really. 
I'll be coming to UK soon. I'll be coming to UK soon. So that's 20th. Arrive on the 20th on the day of my mum's birthday. I didn't work that out. I didn't work it out. Um, as you, some of you might know, my mum passed away uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, I'll be... Uh, going to UK to, to, to be with my family and, and stuff. And um, I was choosing the flight and the, the flight tickets were so expensive for August, uh, just through the roof, absolutely through the roof. And uh, Uh, thank you, bro. Thank you. So, so uh, the flight was just like so expensive. A friend of mine sent me the money for the flight, but it, it was just too expensive, the flight. So I just went down the list and I was just looking for the cheapest flight. I wasn't looking for a specific date. So I get into September and I just go, that'll do. And I pressed it, the cheapest flight. And then I went back about an hour later and I looked at it and I said to Dorcas, you know when I arrive in UK? She says, what? I says, on my mother's birthday. And I arrive on my mum's birthday. So isn't that providential? So, yeah, Speaker's Corner, I'll be definitely going to Speaker's Corner, John. I'm ready. I'm ready to go to Speaker's Corner. I am ready, bro. I am ready, ready, ready. Bring it on. I'm ready to go to Speaker's Corner. To rumble in the jungle. I'll be there in Speaker's Corner. No surrender. No surrender. No surrender. So, yeah, I'll be in UK. And I'll be at Speaker's Corner, God willing. Uh, I won't go the first, um, I won't, uh, when do I arrive? So I'll probably go, let me just see. Uh, calendar. calendar, 2023, let me just see. Uh, calendar, calendar. So I'll just get calendar. I'll just give you a, an idea. So I'm just getting it for you. Okay, so I arrive on the 20th, which is a Wednesday. Sunday's 24th, so I won't be going that Sunday. Because on the 23rd, I'm spending time with my family. We have a special celebration of my mom as a family on the 23rd, that's Saturday. Uh, so I think it will be probably, John, uh, the first week in October. Yeah, the COVID-19. <laughs> yeah, speaker's got to get more vicious. I was born for such a time as this, John o Jason O'Brien. I don't mind. I'm an old-time street preacher who's been kicked in the stomach. I've been punched. I've been... So rowdy Muslims don't, don't scare me. Yeah, COVID, COVID restrictions might come in. I'll just say I can't wear the mask. I'll go, I can't wear the mask. I've got uh, mental issues. <laughs> yeah, it's spiritual darkness at Speaker's Corner, isn't it?
Yeah, okay, John, I'll see you there, uh, God willing, on the 1st of October. I'll announce it when I'm in UK. So I'll make a video about coming. But I'll probably go, Jason O'Brien, I'll probably go more than once. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine, yeah. I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll probably go more than once to Speaker's Corner. I'll probably go a few times. Okay, well, Jay, we can, uh, if you're free sometime, I can come down and meet you in Birmingham and we can, we can go and find this knowledgeable Muslim and uh, have a chat with him. <laughs> if you want, I don't mind, bro. I, if you want some encouragement, Jay, Jason O'Brien, uh, I can meet you in Birmingham, no problem. Come down to Birmingham. So uh, we can do that, no problem. So if you want to meet up in Birmingham, we can do some evangelism and maybe let this Muslim guy find us and get him on camera and expose him. Eh? Okay. I'll... I'll see if I can get some of the guys to come. We can get a team to come down, some of my old friends, street preaching friends, and we can descend at Birmingham and, and meet you down there on one Saturday, bro. Yeah. So it probably be near the end, maybe third week in October, roundabout. Yeah, keep getting stomach ache. Don't know why. If you keep, if you see me keep going like this, it's just a little stomach ache. I don't know. Yeah, well, we can we can jump this guy. So, yeah, so we could do that. So, yeah, so I'll be out and about around UK preaching, street preaching, go to Speaker's Corner. I'll pop in, God willing, Jason O'Brien to see you if you want down at Birmingham and there'll be other street preaching friends I'll be linking up with. I'll be doing a lot of outreach while I'm there because uh, the, the flight is so expensive. I, uh, I might as well take advantage of it and just stay in UK for a I think about six weeks, Dorcas says I can do that. So, and, sorry. So I'll be spending a bit of time with my dad, uh, but I'll be sharing, <laughs> sharing the gospel because it's quite lonely here. I don't meet any British people here. And, you know, I think that's what gets me down quite a bit, you know. You know, um, Hudson Taylor, I mean, they 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 were able to meet with a lot of British people in China when they were doing evangelism. But me, I don't get to meet many British people or people who can I can relate to here, and it gets very very lonely. So it it, it kind of cheers me up being back in UK, being with British people and Christians mainly as well. So I'll be making the most of it, spending time with other street preaching friends. I have a lot of street preaching friends in UK. And I think Brother Frank from Holland is coming over uh, to see me. Uh, he's going to come over from Holland. And uh, he's going to come to UK to see me. So I need to let him know what's the best date. Uh, so he's coming over. And then there's Brother Roy 
who's down south. He might come up if he gets time. Um, and I think also there's Brother Ollie's going to be there. He's down south. He's coming up. The first week I get there, he'll be there. So, And I'll be meeting Roger, Brother Roger in Bolton, from Bolton. Uh, Kieran, who's in Bury, uh, Gareth, Mike. And there's, I'll probably, hopefully, see Aru in, in Speaker's Corner. Uh, maybe Hatun might be there, might get to see her. Uh, so lots of old friends and colleagues I'd like to see. Uh, but I got a feeling I'm going to get arrested. I don't know why. <laughs> I got a feeling I'm going to get arrested when I get, come to UK. For street preaching, for preaching the gospel, you know. I just got a feeling, but maybe it's just maybe it's just me. I don't know. Dorcas is okay. She's okay. She's doing a good work with the kids. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll just check. I don't know. I keep thinking there's a tap on. Just give me a second, guys. And get us. Yeah, so I'm going to just spend a bit of time praying and then prepare a sermon for tomorrow. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. Um, and then, I can't believe it's September already. Is it, is it me or time's going fast? Time is moving, isn't it? Oof. It's like September already. And oh, it's my birthday in September. Eh? My birthday in September. Does anybody know when my birthday is? Any know? <laughs> anybody know when my birthday is? My birthday is the 26th of September. 26th of September. And does anybody know how old I am? Because I've lost count. I've stopped counting me. When I got to about 36, I stopped counting. So I'm, I think, is it 54? I'll be 54, will I? I think I'll be 54. But I stopped counting when I was about 38, 40, I thought. So I don't even know how old I am. I think I'm 50. I think I'm 53 now. So I must be 54 coming next month. <laughs> Forty-eight. You're a you're a young lad, Jay Jason O'Brien. You're young. Twenty-five sisters. Twenty-five. Young. John's fifty-two. Me, I look younger. I know. I've got a baby face. You should call me baby face, Jay. I'll tell you what, I'll show you a picture. Watch this. Show, I'll show you something here. This is not vanity. Okay. Look at this picture. Yeah. Look at this picture. Look at Spurgeon's picture. Yeah. Look at Spurgeon. And look at my face. This is not vanity. You'll think I'm crackers now. You're going to think I'm absolutely crackers. 
Where is it? It's not. Oh, oh, it's there, it's there, it's there. Look at this, yeah. Right, look at Spurgeon's face. Can you see Spurgeon's face? You look at my face. Do you see any similarities? Can you see any similarities? Some have said in the past, I've got Spurgeon's looks. You'll think, oh, yeah, you're vain now. You're crazy, crazy. <laughs> Could be related. <laughs> John McBride says, you've always thought I look like Spurgeon. I know. I've got his, I've got his looks. I don't know why. Maybe he's my great great granddad. Eh? I even preach. I even put my hand up like that, like Spurgeon. You know, like that. I didn't think you believed in reincarnation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Hindu, nor the son of a Hindu. We're having a laugh, that's good. <laughs> so, yeah, so. I even trained, you know, it, it's quite strange. I even trained. It's not called this anymore, but it used to be called Spurgeon Memorial Evangelical Church. I was trained at Spurgeon Memorial Evangelical Church. It's, it's the church where Spurgeon was converted. And uh, Spurgeon went in on that cold day and a cook read a scripture and he got converted, didn't he? So that church is still going now. It's, it's changed now. I think it's artillery... Ev Artillery Evangelical Church, but at the time it was called, when I was there, Spurgeon Memorial Evangelical Church. Yeah, so his sermons are great. Spurgeon's sermons are amazing. Yeah, it was a Methodist church at the time. Yeah. And when I was there, it was in transition. There was a pastor called Derek Hale, and the church was owned by some charity, but it was still, the charity was not Methodist, but the church itself was a Methodist. And uh, the, the, guys, the guy, uh, Pastor Derek Hale, he was Reformed Baptist, uh, but there was a Methodist couple there, very, very uh, dedicated Methodist couple. They were there originally for years. and uh, But then there was a guy called Keith and a guy called Malcolm. They were became elders of the church. They were Reformed Baptists. So it became very much Reformed Baptist. And they had a vote about bringing in the baptistry. And the Methodist guy got really upset and left. But it was originally Methodist, yeah. Yeah, I'm 1689 too, bro. So, um, yeah, so uh, it was originally Methodist. And then uh, I think some years ago, not, not long ago, they renamed it. They renamed it uh, Artillery evangelical church but when i was at the, at the artillery street i trained also at the met tab because the pastor who's reformed baptist there Derek hale 
sent me once a month he sent me to the met tab where spurgeon spurgeon's church you know so w once a month i would go to the seminary the reformed baptist seminary at the met tab you know um so yeah so i've been a so i looked like spurgeon and i was at his church where he was converted i was at his church where he was the pastor So I come from good pedigree, theological pedigree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, the the Bad Ehrman Orthodox corruption. This is a Muslim guy. Nice to meet you as a Muslim. Uh, Bad Ehrman's orthodox corruption of scripture uh the thesis behind it is uh from walter bauer walter bauer uh wrote a book in the 1930s but basically the thesis of walter bauer is there's no there was no one christianity that there was many christianities there was no such thing as orthodoxy and uh, this book in the 1930s, it, it wasn't popular because the Second World War came and nobody really knew about it or read it. But after the war, around about the 1960s, it was republished and uh, it, it had a massive impact in the academic world and it had a big impact on Bart Ehrman. So Bart Ehrman's PhD is based on Walter Bauer's thesis that there was no one Christianity. And Walter Bauer, uh, he chose four areas of study in the ancient world. And he came to his conclusion in studying those four cities. And it was a very uh, uh, minor study. It was only four cities, right? And that thesis has been debunked now. It's been destroyed. And so Bart Ehrman's thesis comes from Walter Bauer's thesis. So there's no big deal. Bart Ehrman's Orthodox Corruption in Scripture is no big deal. He takes Walter Bauer's thesis, there's no one Christianity, and he brings it into his history of textual criticism. It's as simple as that. But when you do more than a study of four cities, you study many, many cities, which other scholars have done. Walter Bauer's thesis collapses because there was an orthodoxy. The orthodoxy was Jesus is the Son of God, he died and rose again. Ignatius, Polycarp, Irenaeus, just in Marty, you can go on and on and on. Okay. So that's your well, that that's your Bart Ehrman dealt with. That's uh, you're done and dusted as a Muslim now. Okay. And the other thing as well, Bar Ehrman believed that Jesus was crucified. So you as Muslims, yeah, so come on, you as a Muslim are saying that read Bar Ehrman, but the same Bar Ehrman that you say read, Bar Ehrman believed that Jesus died on a cross. He believes in the historical Jesus died, was crucified. But your Quran says he was not crucified. So you're saying read Bar Ehrman, but Bar Ehrman disagrees with your Quran. So you're only taking bits of Bar Ehrman that you like, but you're not looking at the bits that actually destroy your Quran from Bar Ehrman, who says that Christ was crucified. End of debate. I mean, if you want to come on and talk about it here, Talk, talk, you know, you want to come on and talk about it here. As a Muslim, here is your opportunity to come and have a live discussion with me on Bart Ehrman. There we are. There's the link. That's for the Muslim. You've got the link there, bro. Come on now. You can do it if you try. There's the link. You got the link there. You got the link. <coughs> you 
you've got the link there there's the link you've got your opportunity to share your idea and tell us about Bart Ehrman you've got the opportunity there as a Muslim I'm giving you the opportunity you see Eh? You got your opportunity. You got your opportunity, your big opportunity as a Muslim to present your argument. So you said, I, I need yeah, I need to watch more Dawa to be able to discuss with you. Okay, well, let me just enlighten you. Bart Ehrman, the one that you're saying read, okay, says that Jesus was crucified. That it's a historical fact. Let me just get you the quotation for you. Okay. Bart Ehrman states that the crucifixion of Jesus on the order of Pontius Pilate is the most certain element about him. So it's one of the most certain elements about the life of Jesus that he was crucified. So you as a Muslim say, read Bart Ehrman, Bart Ehrman destroys you. So, so there we are as a Muslim. And I, I give you opportunity. You say you can't do it because you've got to speak to Dawah, talk to the Dawah teams, whatever. But I've just showed you that Bart Ehrman believed that Jesus was crucified. So what's the beef? This is another one here. And that's the other one. That the, the, the Muslim uh, can't state it here. And, 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 and Salah, Salah Adin, whatever your name is, yeah? You obviously have not read Bar Ehrman's Corruption of Scripture. If you have to talk to your Dawa teams, it means you don't have a lot of knowledge, which means you've not read Bar Ehrman's Orthodox Scripture, and yet you're telling us to read it. Hi, David. God bless you, bro. Okay, folks. I've got to go. I miss you all. Anybody got any questions for me before I go? Because there's a few of you online. If anybody's got any questions, if the Muslims got any questions, if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to ask me the question. And then I'm going to go. Then I got to go. I got to pray. Got to do a sermon. But if you want to ask me a question, ask me a question. Yeah, David, if you go back on the stream, I talk about what I mean by communism, like neo-Marxism. Yeah, it's something that's been on my mind for a long time, so I just felt... Because people say, oh, as a pastor, you shouldn't talk about... As a preacher, you shouldn't talk about politics and things like that, but... 
I just felt I had to share what was on my mind, you know. Um, and I think it's on many other people's minds as well, Christian's mind, so. Yeah, yeah. But as a Muslim, if you want to ask a question, uh, as a Muslim, have you got any questions for me? Anybody got any questions for me? Uh, uh, I don't know. It's a difficult one. Uh, David about politics I think preachers should stick to preaching the gospel and um, teaching the the church the word of God but I think sometimes if there's an evil coming then a speaker should speak out so if you know uh, the evil at the moment is all these things are combined in transgender gay rights, BLM, all of them are conspiring to squash the church. And I think people, a preacher should warn the church about it. And Jason, you are leaders. I'm a preacher of the word, bro, just a preacher. Okay, enjoy your phone call, sister. Oh, right, Spurgeon went up against Marx. Wow. Yeah, I think politics can get too much. I'm not going to answer that, brother. Yeah, I'm not. I, 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 I'm. I, I don't mean political leader or anything like that. I, I'm not a leader of any kind of political group or anything like that. I'm just. I, 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 if you meant it in that way, I think. I think leaders. Yeah. I stay away from that. I didn't mean anything like that at all. I, I think that I'm on about those who are, who, who are uh, preaching the word of God, teaching the word of God, then from time to time, if an evil comes, uh, you know, gay rights, for example, gay rights, the, way, the reason why we have gay rights, I think a lot of it is because preachers didn't say say anything about it. Bishops didn't say anything about it. Pastors didn't say anything about it in the UK. They kept quiet. And now we're living with the fruits of that quietness. So if good men stay silent, uh, David, then evil reigns. You know? Yeah, that's the main thing is to preach the gospel. Yeah, English Christians are passive. They won't, they won't speak out. They won't say anything. It's true. It's true, and it's a fine balance because, you, because uh, as John, saying, John was saying about... Um, 
people can uh, you can get too involved in politics, can't you? I mean, I I to be honest, I I, I keep abreast every day of what's going on, and I think it can be too much. Um, I I can I I like keep abreast every day of what's going on, and in the funnily, I find British politics is boring but american politics it's like a drama um but i i just wanted to talk about i just wanted to talk about the overall feeling of darkness that's come come upon us I just wanted to talk about that and then some thoughts about how to deal with it. And I thought just talking about it might help people to clarify that, you know, they might have been thinking about it, but they've not really expressed it or they've moaned about it. And I just felt maybe, and maybe other people have felt like I've been feeling and that's why I shared it. But I, I definitely wasn't trying to, like, say I'm some kind of political leader or anything like that. No, I, I didn't mean it in that way. I was just sharing it, sharing it as a, as someone who's just been feeling these things for quite a few months, as a Christian and as a preacher. And I just felt like share. I just felt I had to share these thoughts. Um, and I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying that um, so that, that's all. You know, please. I'm not. I. I, I don't ever want to. I'm not. No. Tommy Robinson or anything like that. I don't see myself in any shape or any way. I'm not a leader of any major or small group. I don't see myself in that way. I, I've just got a small following on YouTube. We have a church plant here. We have church, you know, we could have, we have the seed of a, three or four churches here that we can be planting but i don't see myself as um, any major lead or anything like that I'm just an old-time preacher of the gospel so i hope da uh, david i didn't give that impression bro um yeah the, but uh I kind of wish uh, the Lord would do something. I keep praying the Lord would do something because it just seems like the darkness is getting thicker and thicker. And you just think, Lord, when is when's there going to be some light at the end of the tunnel? When's the, when, when is there going to be a fight back? And, 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 and very often it's people that are not orthodox. Uh You know, the people that are fighting back, they're not Orthodox Evangelical Reformed Christians, if you think about it. Jordan Peterson, you know, he's not Reformed, he's not Evangelical. He, he fights back more than Reformed Evangelicals. Uh, Candice Owen, she's not Reformed Evangelical. Uh, the Jewish guy on Daily Wire, what's his name? The, the Jewish guy on really smart guy of my name the, the guy on you know all the the daily wire guys they're not orthodox evangelical reformed Christians yeah Ben Shapiro they're fighting back you know Glenn Beck 
he fights back. He's he's Mormon. He's not a evangelical reformed Christian. Uh, the war room people. Who are the war room people? Uh, GB News. Uh, Calvin Robertson. He's not reformed evangelical. He's kind of Catholic, high Catholic high church. So the the people that are fighting back at uh, uh, rebel media, they're not reformed evangelical outfit. They're just a general outfit but they're not reformed so the evangelical reform leader christian pastors leaders and you know whatever they're, they're not the ones that are fighting back mainly all right you've got uh john mccarthy you've got vody balcom you've got uh some of these people but generally in the main it's the daily wire people it's candy Owen, it's the ben shapira it, it's uh it's uh, Jordan Peterson, uh, Douglas Murray. He's gay, but he, he he fights back against all this stuff, you know. So we don't see really, not in Australia, not in Canada, not in UK, a little bit in America, but even in America, we don't see strong, reformed, evangelical pastors and leaders in the public square fighting for the gospel and and taking the ground away from these neo-marxist identity politics people I'll just read David's uh, statement. I guess what I mean was we need leaders who are morally sound to stand up and take a leadership role, exposing the ugly truths. There's still not enough people fighting back. Yeah, I think middle-class respectability in UK is a one thing. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm work lower working class same with me jason o'brien i'm working class too bro please remember i'm everyone i'm typing on the phone now no no david we 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 we, we don't take that no you you your spelling's terrible bro of course all right mate we don't we forgive you don't we We forgive you, mate. So, I don't know, we've covered a lot of ground. Have you noticed the Muslims done a runner? My, my spelling's worse. My, I, I think out of all of you, my spelling's got to be worse than all of you put together. My spelling's terrible. So, yeah, I think we all agree that there needs to be more people speak out. We all agree that we've got to be careful we don't get too much into politics because it can be a distraction from preaching the gospel. I think we all agree that the main thing is preaching the gospel. I think we all agree that we need to keep focus on that. I think we all agree that people there needs to be more people speaking out. Uh, and I think we all agree that Bart Ehrman is a heretic. <laughs> Pure and simple. 
Eh? I think we all agree on that. I think we all agree we're not very good at spelling. Uh, John Buck, Jason O'Brien, or David, and Jason Birds. We're all not good at spelling. And we put the world to rights. So what are you eating today, guys? Make me jealous. Come on. What are you having? What are you going to be eating today? Jason O'Brien, what are you going to be eating today? David Duncan, what are you going to be eating today? Um, should we align with the Muslims? I don't think we should. I think it's uh, inevitable in some situations that the Muslims will be there. For example, when we went, when people go to the drag queen and protest, the Muslims have been there and Christians have been there. But uh, I think it's dangerous to align yourself with any group that's, that's not of God because you, you're aligned with Satan. So even though they might, you might be able to use them politically to, to make a stand, I think it's dangerous to align yourself with these people because they'll they'll have an influence on you they'll have an influence on your people if you align yourself with catholics some of those catholics are going to influence evangelicals and if you align yourself with muslims they'll impact the christians to turn away from christianity to islam so i would say no So Jason O'Brien's having food at Morrison's. <laughs> Probably chip, sausage, and egg. Oh, oh, chip, sausage, and egg. Sausage and egg. Oh, fantastic. And chips. Chicken sandwich. Oh, cracker do. Yeah, yeah. Proper Scottish breakfast. Is that, is that, uh, David, is that, uh, what's it called now? That black pudding thing. What's it called? The black pudding. You know, it's got black thing and blood in it and everything. I forgot what they call it. I'm getting old. But uh, I know what you mean, Scottish breakfast. Wow. Haggis, haggis, that's it, John. Haggis. I love Agis. Agis is gorgeous with the fried egg. Well, Jason, uh, <clears throat> I want to come down and help you do some evangelism as well for the church there. White pudding. Now, white pudding. White pudding is fantastical. I guess he's okay. You, you know, my mom used to make them rag puddings. You know, it's like a big white pudding with mincemeat in, and it's it's in a cloth. Did you ever have that? Did anybody have that? I used to love that when my mum made that. But yeah, so do an outreach bring a team down for a day and do some outreach in the community to get the church and build up the church it's 
So this is like a bit of an outing this tonight, today, isn't it? Us all talking together. It's like we're all sat in the garden chatting, isn't it? Anyhow, has anybody got any any questions? I was force fed cabbage and boiled bacon as a child. John, you had a tough life, bro. John, I'm sad. I feel sad for you, bro. You had a tough life. Cabbage and boiled bacon. What kind of life was that as a kid? I was brought up on tater rash. You know tater rash? My mum used to make tater rash. We had tater rash that much. I thought my eyes and my nose and my body were going to turn tater rash. With dumplings, minced meat, etc. Yeah? Egg tatties. Egg tatties. You're proper Scotsman, David. Egg tatties, scones lawn, sausage bacon, sauce grill, fried tomatoes, Baked beans and mush. Oh, my giddy hand, David. That is top. That's a top breakfast, that is, bro. That's a trucker's breakfast. Next door, you have a group with clouds. What is it, Jason O'Brien? Is it a mental hospital next door or what, bro? Cabbage and boiled bacon. Cabbage and boiled bacon. Is that John Mc and John John Mc and John O'Brien? Cabbage and boiled bacon. I've never had cabbage and boiled bacon. That's a new one on me. Haggis. Cabbage and boiled bacon. What kind of planet are we on? But if you didn't eat it, you were you were belted. Oh my giddy you had, you had a tough life, you John. Special needs. I your parents are Irish. Oh, it's an Irish meal, is it? Cabbage and bacon. Cabbage and boiled bacon, eh? Wow. Cabbage is my jam. Hey, I'll tell you what, I'm learning something here, lads. I'm learning something here. I'll be going to bed tonight dreaming of cabbage and boiled bacon. Oh, John McDonald, oh, but I, John McDonald, they had a tough time. I'll be dreaming, oh, cabbage and boiled bacon, the poor lads. I think what's happening to Donald Trump, uh, David, is part of this communism. I think it's part of the the collapse of Western civilization. I think, I think you, you've got you've got these uh, politicians, but then above the politicians, you've got the the military industrial complex, and above them, you've got BlackRock and a few other companies that own nearly like most of the main companies, and uh, basically. They don't want Trump because it spoils their party, basically. So it's part of the the complete collapse of the of, of America, really. It's sad. So they were they, as Tucker Carlson said, they will probably assassinate him, and they will probably assassinate him. I think Donald Trump might be having boiled cabbage and boiled bacon in prison, the way things are going with him. Oh, now, John Muck, mashed potatoes with onion and butter, fried onions, fried onions. Now we're talking, uh, and sausage and sausage, mashed potato, onions and sausage with butter now I'm with you. Oh, 
All right, Jace. Enjoy your Morrison meal. Controlled opposition. It could be. You never know, John Mc. Could be. It could be all uh, controlled, bro. I, I don't. Take care, Jason O'Brien. God bless you. Enjoy your Morrison's trip, bro. I'll be coming to Morrison's. I'll be joining you in Morrison's mid-September. I'll be there. Get me breakfast. It won't be cabbage and bacon. It boiled cabbage and bacon, though. I don't think it'll be that. I think it'll be fried egg and bacon with a bit of a toast. You know, here, like, when I have butter here, it feels like the butter's made in 1923. And the bread is, is like, it's not our bread. It's like funny bread. So the, these are luxuries for me. To have good butter and good bread is a luxury. Although, you have, you did, you, you have seen the Kentucky Fried Chicken video, haven't you? There is a Kentucky Fried Chicken video of me a few weeks ago with some of the lads who we did evangelism with at Cape Coast, because there's a lot of white people in Cape Coast. And so there's a Kentucky Fried Chicken there. And I had a Kentucky Fried Chicken, so happy days. Anyway, it's just a bit of fun, lads, isn't it? Sometimes you have to just take a chill pill. Sometimes you can go too deep in theology, too deep into politics. Sometimes you just need to just take a chill pill sometimes. Get your feet back on reality ground, in it? Uh, well, if 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 uh, is that David? Is that uh, Donald Trump going to prison? Is that what you mean? Uh, I think it looks like they want World War, World War Three. The way they are with Russia, though, doesn't it, John David? You know, it seems to be feet on the ground. People who who are in the know various military advisors seem to think that they want to push Russia to a, a more of a, a war with NATO. So I don't know. Onions could make a sand donut. What's a sand donut, David? What's a sand donut? Do you mean a donut? I won't like onions on a donut, but I don't know what a sand donut is. What's a sand donut? Let me Google. Sand donut. Sand donut. I'm going to Google sand donut. Sand donut. Sand donut. Oh, no, I couldn't put onions on a sand donut, bro. I, I, is that a Scottish thing? Because I don't, I couldn't put onions on a sand donut. You must have a stomach like a, a tiger tank, David. Your stomach must be like a tiger tank. Onions and, and, and a sand donut. I tell you what I like, fajitas. You have you had fajitas, the Mexican thing? You wrap it up, you put peppers in, you put this in, you put that in, you wrap it up. Fajitas, excellent. Yeah? You know, uh, do you want to laugh? Years ago, years and years ago when I was a little kid, because <clears throat> we come from a working class family, we were traveling and we went to this hotel. This is a true story, this. <laughs> it's a true story. But it's safe. 
continental breakfast, you know, for morning, like part of the paying of the bill, the, the hotel bill, you get a breakfast. So me and my sister went, oh, continent, continental breakfast, continental breakfast. Oh, mum, dad, we're getting a continental breakfast. So we thought we'd be getting like fried egg, sausages. <laughs> so we got, we were given a plate with croissants on. But we thought continental breakfast would have been fried egg, sausage, bacon, uh, mushrooms, toast. Instead, we got these little croissants and maybe mum, maybe sister going, it's continental breakfast. It's a, look at this, Dad. You know, yeah, they won't rush you to embrace globalism. It's true, David. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a it's a world crazy, crazy world. I mean. Years ago, we had politicians had a bit more sense. Uh, you know, politicians in Reagan's time, they had a little bit more sense than today, but the politicians of today, they've lost the plot, haven't they? They've got no... I mean, they're in the little bubble, and they, they just don't know what they're doing, and uh, they could trip us into a third world war. But I always thought when Biden got into power and his... And his, and his presidency was going downhill i always thought this russian ukraine war that they would try to make it even worse a war as if it was america and russia in order to save his presidency and tucker carlson recently has mentioned that that he thinks there's going to be a a war with nato and it could be because if there's a war with nato and america that means they can bring in wartime um they can bring in wartime laws which will affect the election which will they can doctor the election so uh, and also like wartime leaders are more popular aren't they so a croissant and orange juice i'm not into croissants though Yeah, Fujitas are amazing. I mean, you have a choice to talk about geopolitics or Fujitas. Give me a Fujita any time. Give me a Fujita at any time. But could I eat a Fujita with a Scotsman who's going to have a, a donut with onions on it? I'm not so sure, David. I'm not so sure I could wing that one. Yeah, I'll tell you a joke. Do you want me to tell you a joke? I'll tell you a joke. Are you ready? Just have a bit of fun. This guy goes to a hotel. And uh, he's a chef. And he's looking for a job as a chef. And the hotel manager says, okay, before I give you the job, how do I know that you are a chef? He said, look, I've worked for the queen. I've cooked for the queen. I've cooked for famous people. I'm a chef. So the manager says, look, I can't just take your word for it. Show me. Show me what you can do. So the guy says, <clears throat> okay, give me an egg. So the manager says, an egg? Yeah, give me an egg. So the manager gives the, this guy an egg. He gets the egg. He throws it up in the air. The egg falls on his head, falls on his shoulder, runs down his arm, runs down his leg, onto his foot. He kicks it with his foot. The egg flies up in the air lands on the frying pan, breaks, the, the eggshells fall into the bin, and the egg falls into the frying pan, fries perfectly. The manager said, I can't believe my eyes, that was amazing. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Did, did I see that? Was that true? Can you do it again? The, guy, the, 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 the chef guy says, yeah. Give me an egg. So the manager gives him an egg. He throws it up in the air. The egg lands on his head, rolls down his back, rolls down his leg. He flicks it with his back heel. The egg flies up in the air, lands onto the frying pan, breaks, the shell goes in the bin, the egg fries. Fantastic. 
Come on, I said, that's amazing. Never seen anything like it in my life. The chef says, uh, do I get the job? The man says, no chance. You'd mess about too much. <laughs> you mess about too much. You're not getting the job. Is that a good one? Did that make you laugh? Come on. Did that make you laugh? Anybody laugh? Oh, I think the gold standard is on the way. Yeah, it is on the way. But did anybody laugh at that joke? Come on. Eh? Uh, John, Mc... John laughed at it. So we're, we're talking geopolitics, gold standard, and we're getting good jokes in the middle of it. You can't be bad. Plus talks about Fajitas, boiled cabbage, and uh, boiled bacon. I'm just having chicken, mushroom, crochets, runner beans, cherry tomatoes with pasta. Fantastic. That sounds good to me. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to go in a minute, folks. So you've got me staying here longer than I was intending. Talking about cabbage and, and stuff. Can anybody guess my favourite food? Anybody guess my favourite food? If you guess my favourite food, I'll bring, I'll bring. A, I've got some books here. I'll bring a little book for you. If you get it, I'll bring it just in case I meet you on the way. Can anybody guess my favourite food of all time? My favorite food. I'll tell you another joke, but it's a true story. This it's a true story. It's not. It's not a joke, joke. I, I, my favorite food. Well, I, I've got a few favorite food. I like Yorkshire pud. Yorkshire pud. Chicken. Steak. You see, I'm talking about food because I'm in Ghana, you see. Roast beef in Yorkshire pud, you can't beat it. <clears throat> Anyhow, I'll tell you a little joke. It's, it's not a joke joke, but it's a true story. Anyhow, I was helping this pasta, and uh, there was only like two people going to the church. <clears throat> and uh, a friend of mine said, will you help this pasta? He's, He's only got a few people and he, and he needs help. So, now he's Ugandan pastor, charismatic Ugandan. I'm reformed, right? You know I'm reformed. But I, I like to help other Christians if they alter fundamentals. And uh, so, this is funny this year. So he's charismatic, yeah? And my friend is charismatic. And there's only two people in the church. And they asked me to help them because I've done church planting. So I went there. And I'm not saying because of me, because God does his work. But the church grew and there was about 40 people there. But they're nearly all charismatic, you know. They're all speaking in tongues, jalabalabom, jalabababom and all that, right? And... Uh, they kept looking at me like, I'm not speaking in tongues, like, I'm not giving it jelly bomb. And they're thinking, oh, Jason, he's, he's not spirit-filled, he's not anointed. So they're coming round me and saying, why aren't you speaking in tongues? I said, no, just leave me alone, you know. I, I helped them to plant it and, and eventually I, I, I was to go, but and they're like, they're like saying, you know, why aren't you speaking in tongues? And they're talking amongst themselves, he's not speaking in tongues, he's not spirit-filled. So one day, I'd been to an Indian, I'd been for an Indian, you know, like an Indian meal, you know, coriander and all that, you know, 
different curries and everything yeah and uh next day you have this meeting and there's about eight of them around me going shalabalabom shalabalabom speaking tongues jason shalabalabom i got you know give me a so i went they were all around me like putting pressure on me so i went like this i went like this i went <laughs> so all these charismatics went, yo, he's speaking in tongues, he's speaking in tongues. I'm going, kari, kari, anda, kari, kari, anda. <laughs> and I was just repeating what I read on the, the menu of the of the Indian restaurant, and they thought I was speaking in tongues. Kari, kari, anda, kari, kari, anda. They went, they're all going, ah, he's speaking in tongues. I'm going, kari, kari, anda, kari, kari, anda. Oh, dear. I bet you never knew that about me, did you? Eh? But I don't believe in tongues because it says there has to be an interpreter. You know, in in uh, on the speaking in tongues, it's clear. I mean, everything has to be done by the word, you would agree. And if you look at tongues, speaking in tongues, it's absolutely clear. It's as clear as day. Um, it's as absolute clear as day. To another faith, the same spirit. To another gift of healing, the same spirit. To another working of miracles, right? Uh, what does it say? So it says, uh, chapter 14. So it says then, for if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So Paul is saying, look, you're speaking in tongues. Nobody's understanding. What's the point? Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. So the whole point of speaking in tongues, if people don't understand, it's useless. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with my spirit, and I will pray with understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with understanding. And then it talks about um, but if the verse 28 on Corinthians 14 20 but if there be no interpreter let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God let the prophet speak two or three and let the others judge if anything be revealed to another that sitteth by let the first hold his peace so in the speaking of tongues, there has to be an interpreter and you to do it one by one. When you see tongues today, everybody speaks in tongues at the same time and there's no interpreter. So tongues today are ceased because it's not according to the word of God. Simple. Shepherd's pie. My mum used to make shepherd's pie. A shepherd's pie. Listen, guys, I could stay here all day and talk about shepherd's pie, fajitas, everything. I've got to go. I need to spend some time praying and I need to prepare a message. And you guys, you've got to go to Morrison's and do your thing and everything. You're not keen on shepherd's pie. It's okay. Shepherd's pie with 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 uh, plowman's pickle. Plowman's pickle and shepherd's pie. Cracker do. Put some pickle on it. Pickles. Plowman's pickle. You're, you're seeing another side to me today, aren't you, folks? 
you you see the serious bible teacher preacher but today you've seen the other side there's a fun side to me you're seeing the fun side to me oh you're just joking okay i like ham sandwich with pickles pickle and ham sandwich i like you know mackerel and butter is nice you know mackerel and butter salmon sandwich salmon you know what's nice salmon in that sauce that white sauce mint sauce white mint sauce you know the sauce that's nice but you can't beat a good steak a good steak with fries hey do you know what always keeps you know what always comes in my mind when about adverts it's funny this isn't it you know adverts when i was a little kid I always used to watch this advert and it's always stuck with me. And every now and again, as an, old, an adult at 53, going on 54, this comes in my head. A finger of fudge is just enough. It's very good to eat. It's full of pepper and goodness. It's very small to eat. You remember that? Anybody remember that advert? A finger of fudge is just enough. It's very good to eat. It's full of pepper and goodness. Yeah. Yeah, when I was a kid. There is all I need. A finger of fudge is just enough to give your kids a treat. It's full of pepper and goodness, but very small and neat. A finger of fudge is just enough to give your kids a treat. <laughs> It keeps coming into my head. John remembers that. We're showing our ages. <laughs> Mushy peas. Speaking in tongues, acting like a mad person, pretending it's normal law. Yeah. Or the kind kind the candelini kindelini spirit, kundalini spirit, or whatever it is. Orvis advert. Oh yeah, do you remember the Orvis advert? Well, I just love Orvis spread. Orvis advert. I think this is the one. This is the one I remember. Yeah. This one here. You ready? Stop on round would be on my Peggy's place. Twas like taking bread to the top of the world. Twas a grand right back though. I knew Baker at Atkettle on and doorsteps of on always ready. There's wheat germ in that loaf, he'd say. Get it inside your boy, and you'll be going up that hill as fast as you come down. Though this still has many times more wheat germ than ordinary bread. It's as good for you today as it's always been. Oh, wow. Those were the days, folks, eh? 
<coughs> Those were the days, folks. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it's nice to just have a bit of a chill in it. There's two sides to every Jason. <laughs> I am sandwich with with tomato. Would you like salt on it, David? I like to put salt on it as well. But tomato, I'm sandwich piled up with oh, fantastic! And sometimes put crisp on. Put crisp like uh, prawn cocktail crisps with me am sam with me am and tomato with a bit of salt. <laughs> Watch a football match or something. Sat there chilling out. Different world back then was, wasn't it? Wow, they found a mouse in the loaf. Wow. And our crisp in a sandwich. A mouse in the cornflakes. I found I was I, I, the only thing I've ever found in when I've been eating is, is I was drinking Coca Cola about three years ago down in Accra, and I found a fly in the in the bottle. There was a right at the bottom was a fly. It, it must have been there for I don't know how long, but I've never seen anybody found a mousey cornflakes. Wow. Yeah, from the factory, yeah. It's a funny day today. It's been raining a bit. Oh, I feel so much better today, folks. Oh, I was so depressed yesterday. Yesterday, I was, I couldn't even get out of bed yesterday. And the day before yesterday, I was so gloomy. Dorka sat next to me. She held me hand. She sang a song. Da, da, da. She sings like that. Da, da, da. And uh, I couldn't get out of it. I could not get out of it. And today, I feel a new man. Today, I feel like. It's the gloom is gone. So it must be people praying, you know. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So we had the some youth come last night about eight and uh, they connected to a few more years so i gave about uh, eight bibles to the youth yesterday so that was good and uh, we got a i got a meeting on monday leaders meeting some guys that helped me out so kind of me and strategize a bit so i think uh jose will be there john john's amazing john sells coconuts he's also a fisherman he's really coming on he's really growing in the lord he's coming and then paul the driver but he helps us as an evangelist and he's got pastoral gifts as well so i'm training them so they're coming on monday so we'll do some studies and talk about strategy about how to go forward so that's Monday. I'm going to do a sermon today for tomorrow 
which I've got the text. I think I'm going to preach on this. I'm going to study it today. So I think I'm going to study this, preach on this, and develop a sermon on it for tomorrow. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So I'll study that today and do some prayers. Gotta have the crisp. Cheese and onion. Mmm. I like Pringle cheese and onion. Cheese and onion crisp I like. Prawn cocktail is my favourite though. Prawn cocktail is my favourite. What about, you know what I like? Port, port scratchings, but they're very fattening. But port scratchings is nice. And quavers. And you know what I like? But I'm disgusted. I'm dis... I don't know who that is. My wife. Hello? Hello? Okay, sweet. Is it, is it okay? Okay, okay. Okay, all right. Love you. Bye, bye, bye. It's my wife, Dorcas. She'll be here soon. Smoky bacon is not bad. Roaches in Texas. Oh, I'm sorry about that, John. So, this is what I am sad about. This is one of the great catastrophes of all mankind, what I'm going to show you. This is one of the greatest tragedies of modern era. Let me show you what I mean. This is the great tragedy of our times, folks. I'll show you what I mean. Be prepared for the greatest tragedy of modern times. And it's this. Curly whirlies. I used to love curly whirlies. Curly whirlies used to be big. But when I was last in UK, they shrunk the curly whirlies to small. The curly whirlies have shrunk. The curly whirlies are no longer big curly whirlies. This is a catastrophe of the modern era. That curly whirlies have shrunk. How can this be? No, seriously, I'm just having a bit of fun. Curly whirlies used to be big. But now they're very, very small. And I used to love curly whirlies when I was a kid. But the curly whirlies, they're not what they used to be. They're not, <laughs> they're not what they used to be. They're not what they used to be. So we've had a bit of fun today, folks. My wife will be in soon, so I better better uh, just tidy up a little bit before she comes, or I'll be in trouble. <clears throat> There's a few bits and pieces I need to put away. 
So, folks, <coughs> I'm going to have to go in a minute. We've had a bit of fun. I've told you a few jokes. We've done geopolitics. We've done persecution. <coughs> oh, 5P. There were only 5P when they came out. Wow. So today we've had a mixed bag. We've had uh, international geopolitics. We've had uh, a little bit about neo-Marxism. We've had a bit about persecution. We've had a bit a few jokes here and there. We've had uh, 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 an international gourmet from Scottish food to British food. And um, a bit of fun and a bit of a chit-chat. So I hope it's been a light entertainment for you as well. So I'm going to go. Love to everybody out there. Thank you for coming on live. It's been it's been a blessing to me. I felt like I've been at the kitchen table talking to friends today. And thank you for your prayers. My I'm feeling a lot lot better today. I, I really am. I was so down yesterday. I couldn't even get out of bed yesterday or the day before. Uh, so I thank you for those who have been praying and thank you for talking today. So God bless you all. And I don't want to leave you, but my wife will be here soon. So I better just put a few things away. Then I need to pray and then I need to do a sermon. <laughs> so God bless you and take care, folks. God bless you. Bye now. Bye. Bye.